Okay, so here we've got a, uh, a car that starts off stopped and um, and it speeds up uh, to a speed of uh, 50 miles an hour. And then it slows down until it comes to a complete stop at a light. So the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a rough sketch of uh, the distance as a function of time. So um, let's do that over here. Uh, so let's say we've got um, this here. So this is the uh, time, and then this is going to be the uh, distance. OK. So if the car is stopped, then it's going to start right here. Um, it's going to speed up to 50 miles an hour. And then it's going to slow down. Um, now notice we're we're going to sketch the distance as a function of time. So you got to be careful because the information that you're being given is speed. Um, so for example, if I were to um, sketch time and velocity, then I would say, okay, well it starts at a velocity of zero, it goes up, and then it comes down because it comes the velocity goes to 50 miles an hour so this would be 50 and then it would go back down when it stopped but here notice the distance um, you know you reach 50 miles an hour and then you slow down but you're still even when you're slowing down you're still advancing so this distance is still going up so when you're speeding up notice that you're accelerating so if you're accelerating that means your velocity is increasing in other words um, it this has to be showing as concave up notice how the velocity or in other words the slope of the tangent line if you compare the slope of the tangent line notice that it's increasing okay but then at one point it starts slowing down but again the distance is still increasing so it's going to be concave down and then when it comes to a complete stop then time keeps moving but the distance here doesn't change so it's just going to be flat okay so think about that you know it's uh you got to be careful that when you uh are looking depending on what you're looking at whether the distance or the velocity Okay, so now suppose that the equation is um, f of t equals t minus 3t to the fifth plus 5t uh, cubed, where t represents uh, minutes. Okay, so we want to find the average rate of change uh, from 0 to uh, 1 uh, minute. Okay, so and then we also want to draw the secant line connecting these uh, two points. Okay, so the average rate of change, remember, is um, average rate of change between 0 and 1 is equal to f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0. So um, f of 1 is going to equal to uh, 1 minus 3 times 1 to the fifth plus five times one to the third. Okay, so this is equal to three. Then f of zero is going to, when you plug in zero, you're just gonna get zero in that case. So um, here what we've got is three minus zero over one, which is just equal to three. So that's the average rate of change. So this is the slope of the uh, secant line between 0 and 1. Now if I uh, draw a little a little sketch so I want to actually graph this um, now this isn't exact or anything but um, if I graph this guy um, it's gonna look it's gonna come up kinda looks like that and this is 1 and this is 0 so what we're saying is that the slope of this line right here 
the slope of that line is equal to uh, 3. Okay, so now what we want to do is find the instantaneous rate of change at 30 seconds. Now 30 seconds, um, that's, that equals to 0.5 uh, minutes. So t is going to equal to 0.5. So, um, so to um, find the um, instantaneous rate of change, what we're going to do is um, we'll uh, estimate by finding the average rate of change between um, let's say 0.5 and 0.6. So this is going to be a uh, an estimate and then later on we'll um, figure out what it is exactly. So um, this is going to be f of 0.6 minus f of 0.5 all over 0.6 minus 0.5. And so um, if I plug in 0.6 into this guy, um, 1.44672 minus 1.03125 over um, 0 0.1. And uh, this is going to equal to 4.15. So this is about 4.7. Um, the instantaneous rate of change um, at 0.5. Um. Okay, so we have the displacement in centimeters of a particle moving back and forth along a straight line is given by uh, the function of motion s of t equals 2 sine t, sine of pi t plus 3 cosine of pi t, where t is measured in seconds. Find the average velocity from 1 to 2 seconds. Draw the secant line and find the uh, equation. Okay, so um, to find the average velocity or the average rate of change between uh, 1 and 2, um, this is going to be, uh, we need to plug in, oh it's not f, it's s. So we need to plug in s of 2 minus s of 1 over 2 minus 1. Okay, so um, s of 2 is 2 sine of uh, pi times 2 plus 3 cosine of uh, pi times 2, or let's just write it as 2 pi. Okay, so sine of 2 pi, that's the same as sine of 0, which is 0. So this is 0 plus, then cosine of 2 pi is 1, so this is uh, 3. So s of 2 is equal to 3. Now s of 1 is 2 sine of uh, pi times 1 plus 3 cosine of pi times 1. Um, sine of pi is 0 again, and then plus 3 times cosine of pi is negative 1. So this is negative 3. So negative 3. Okay, so I've got 3 minus negative 3. Well, that's 6 over 1, or just 6. So 6 is the average velocity. 6, what are the units? Let me put the units here. Um, here, t is measured in seconds and, oh, centimeters, right? So centimeters per second. Okay. All right, so that's how fast our little particle is going. Okay, now um, as far as finding, uh, drawing the graph, um, I'm just going to, you know, you, you can plug this into your graphing calculator. But um, if you do, you're going to get something that looks kind of like, Kind of like that, sort of. Um, so this is going to be 1, um, 2. So um, the secant line that I just found, this uh, secant line, this what I just found is the slope of the secant line. So between 1 and 2. So from here to here, if I, this line, if I draw that, so the slope of that line 
is equal to 6. Okay, now if I want to find the um, equation of that line, um, now that I have the slope, um, the only thing I need to do is find the uh, y-intercept. So, um, I've got y equals to mx plus b, and so um, I'll plug in the slope, which is 6, and then I just need to plug in um, a value for x and y. So, here I just need to use a point that I know, um, and any point will do. Uh, so I already have 2 here. I know the value at 2 and at 1. Then you can also do 0, I guess. Um, but let's just do 1. Um, so when x is equal to 1, or sorry, well, in this case it's t, but it doesn't really matter. Um, when this guy's equal to 1, then uh, this guy's equal to negative 3. So right here we can see it. It's this point right here. Um, negative 3. Okay, so if I plug that in, I get that b is equal to negative 9. And that looks about right. I mean, if you kind of follow along this line, it looks like it's going to hit negative 9. So then um, the equation is y equals to 6x minus 9. Or you can put t here if you want. It doesn't really matter. Just because t is the variable that we're using. Um, okay, now the next part says estimate the instantaneous velocity at one second by finding the average rate of change between 1 and 1.001 seconds. So, um, okay, so we can do that. Um, so I'm basically going to be doing f of 1.001 .001 minus f at 1 all over 1.001 .001 minus 1. Okay. So now if I uh, plug in 1.001 .001 into my uh, function, I would get negative 3.006268. And then minus um, f of 1, which I already found up here, Actually, these really should be S's, but no, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, but when I plug in 1, I get uh, negative 3. So this is um, negative 3.006268 plus 3 all over um, 0 0.001. And so what I get with this guy when I do this operation is negative 6.268 and so that's my estimate for the instantaneous rate of change exactly at 1 so that's this is the uh, tangent line so that's what I'm estimating the slope of that line to be